No, that will not work, Houston. We got bridges every few hundred yards. Hundred feet, three nine. Wing- <clears throat> you go and get him. But Espanyol making a real fight of it. Now that looked like a foul. The referee right on top of the situation, and his assessment was that Raúl Tamudo took an intentional tumble. And again, he's gone down very easy, Rob. Oh, a great ball off. from De La Pena. He is the architect, De La Pena. When he's on the ball, they've got to be careful. He's played a couple of great passes in. Well, that looks like obstruction to me, but again, Tamudo goes down so easy. It's clearly Tamudo's intention to play for the obstruction, and uh, his theatrics did him no favours. Profete. There's a certain edge developing in this game. Dr. Pepper from the desert from Lake. Jack was um, playing away and all stuff like that. So there are things that I won't want to talk about and things that we want to talk about. So I'm going to be sending you down there to just, you know, brief them, as in saying what I can and can't talk about. Okay. That's all I really wanted to say to you, just sort of to welcome you on board and to let you know that you have got, you know, stuff to deal with. Yeah. Um, and that's it for me. I'll look forward to seeing you at the radio station a little bit later on. Okay. Right. Thanks, Jude. Mm-hmm. See you later. See you later. Rebecca sets off for her first real assignment as Jade's PA. But this isn't her first experience of dealing with unwanted press attention. During the paparazzi challenge, the PAs were forced to fend off a mob of photographers and journalists. And while others lost the plot and didn't impress the judges, this is all going tits up, technical term. Jade was happy with Rebecca's proactive approach. When they did get in the doors, you grabbed me out of the room straight away when I started to get upset put me in the toilet and made me stay in there. He was comforting and soothing. I was quite feisty. I was like, no, you're not taking photos of Jade. And, you know, I was um, I was quite pleased um, with my performance. The interviews are taking place at a national news broadcaster in the heart of London. With Jade's words still ringing in her ears, Rebecca arrives and heads straight to a meeting with presenter Naomi Whedon to lay down the ground rules. There's a couple of things that Jade you know, doesn't really want to cover. She's um, currently working on a project at the minute, so she doesn't want to be asked about any um, a weight or exercise or anything like that. And then also um, to do with the press um, and everything that's happened this weekend with her relationship with Jack. She doesn't want anything to do with that neither. You know, it's not kind of about her personal life. This is just going to be about the show. Just kind of keep it, you know, quite general. Um, and then what she's looking for, what her ideal quality Exactly, is. yeah, what she's going to want people to do. Um, and, you know, how she sees, you know, the show being and what she hopes And why she needs a PA in the first place. Yeah, definitely. OK, well, thank you very much for that. I'm going to go and brief Jay quickly on, um, you know, what you can expect from the interview. And uh, we'll meet you in there. Jade arrives, and there's only a short time for Rebecca to fill her in on what to expect. So there's going to be, like, general questions, um, you know, why do you need a PA? Yeah. During the Thinking for Jade challenge, the PAs were asked to brief Jade for an interview with notorious radio presenter Nick Ferrari. Jade was to be quizzed on the big news stories of the day, but things started ominously when she turned up at the studio in her pajamas. <laughs> and with just five minutes each to get so much information across, none of the PAs fared well. Um, never been fed so much information in my life. What's the background to the fight between Blair and Brown, Jade? Gordon is agreeing with him that he should leave. His Gordon, his... who? Ramsey. What? Oh. What is Al Qaeda? The bad man. The bad man. The bad terrorist person. Well, his name is Al, is it? People what does CCTV do. mean? Um, it's crime catching. <laughs> <laughs> do you think crime this... catching television? Nick Ferrari was not impressed with Rebecca's efforts. Somebody should have told her what it was all about and they didn't cover the basics. But Jade liked her simple approach to getting the information across. I loved the way that Becky um, briefed me when we was doing 
the challenge where I had to go into the radio and do stuff like that. Although people said she didn't brief me that well, I personally think she did because I come out and I felt comfortable talking about that story. With Rebecca's briefing complete, Jade's first interview begins. So you're trying to choose yourself a PA. I imagine this is like to declutter your life and, and sort things out. Why do you think you need one in the first place? Because you seem, you know, pretty organised, like you've kept it together for quite a while. Haven't you? I keep it together as in me and my family. Yeah, I'm a strong believer in... Exactly. In fact, we've got um, up a good height in the air yeah. as well. You can go up and down stairs. It doesn't matter about levels on that. You know, and you can see these two people are different heights there. But you can just alter it and adjust it so you can manage. And what about a mattress? Yeah. That's always we've got a mattress here. We'll exactly. That minute, that's brilliant for that. And very awkward to move. But you know, we're going to show you how easy it is using this and going through kind of doorways and things like that. It makes things so mobile as well. But remember, it'll take up to six hundred pounds in weight, which is phenomenal, just by two using two straps. And coming down the stairs, that's always very difficult as well because things start slipping and sliding. Exactly, that's it slightly right more angle. dangerous. With this you can. Well, £15.56, pence, it's still at that introduction. Hey, John. Hey, Mike, how you doing there? Good. Got some wheels to do? Got some wheels, got to uh, lay... With um, the next generation of strong health... ...reading of what you, Nick, have been saying. Everyone fears the worst. I was in shock. I had no idea what was going on. It, it was in such an incredible pain that uh, I won't never forget it. I, I describe it as someone taking a saw to the side of my face. The baseball breaks Brian's cheekbone, fractures his eye socket, and gives him concussion. But Brian knows he got off easy. It could have been a lot worse than it really was. I could have had a broken jaw. I could have died if it would have hit me in the temple. When Brian gets a look at his face, he fears his dreams of professional baseball are over. I see my face, and it's like an orange on the side of my face. I mean, it's huge. Uh, it's a massive growth-looking thing on the side of my face. And uh, that's when the shock wore off, and I just kind of freaked out a little bit. But Brian makes a full recovery. He takes his team all the way to the playoffs. And they say once you get bucked from the horse, you got to get right back on. And I mean, you know, it's, it's a game. It's what happens. Ten thousand feet over Albany, Oregon. Skydiver Tim McMahon uses helmet cam to videotape two buddies attempting to set a world record: the world's highest bungee jump. A pair of bungee is where two skydivers exit an airplane uh, attached to each other and one becomes the stable platform and the other skydiver gets a bungee jump. They're ready. Mike McGee opens his chute. Greg Jones drops at the end of the bungee. But then... That's Greg's body. Heading downwards. When the bungee cord bounces him up, it breaks, smacks Greg in the head, and knocks him out. Tim watches Greg plunge down towards certain death. As Greg fell past me, I thought Greg was a dead man. I could tell that he was unconscious, the bungees were broken behind him, and I didn't think he had a chance. Greg falls at over 100 miles an hour. But then, incredibly, the chute opens. After I saw Greg's canopy open, I knew I didn't have a lot of time to get with him and see if he was okay. Now, Tim joins the action. He collapses his own chute and dives towards his friend. I didn't think about the danger at the time. I knew I just had to get to my friend, get control of him, and bring him in. Tim reaches Greg and attaches himself to his parachute. They'll land together. Uh, are you okay? I don't know. He was looking at me, but uh, it was kind of like the lights were on, but no one's home. But there's a new danger. Oh, my, my back hurts. 
Greg must help in the landing. But he's too badly injured. Scared me down, Tim. I'm kind of up. When he said that, I, I really started thinking that something was wrong. I didn't know if he had internal injuries, he could be dying. Can you move your legs okay? Huh? Can you move your leg? Yeah. I'm, I'm fading back and forth, though, Tim. As I looked at him, he was in convulsions down below me, shaking. At that point, I knew that we were probably both in for a wild landing. The two men come down fast. They're out of control. And there are many hazards below. I can take this down, but you're gonna land on if you don't fly. They make it. Thank you, get him a hand! Go! Help him! Greg is taken to the hospital. It turns out he's very badly hurt. When the bungee snaps, the force breaks his back and his neck. I felt like I'd just been standing in the middle of the freeway and hit by a truck. But Greg recovers. Thanks to a friend who planned to record a world record in the sky, but ends up performing something even greater. He literally did risk his life to come to the rescue of mine. Had Tim not come, I would probably have been killed within 15 to 20 seconds. Could have been bad for both of us, but I, I kept control of him and I brought him in and we luckily we made it to the ground okay. Later, motorcycle madmen perform illegal street stunts and pay a painful price. And later, two boxers go berserk, triggering a fist-flying brawl. When the world's most amazing videos 2 returns. You Davenport. Now, oh, good. Dick's serving up a family man gets his togetherness. I like I like being that loud Gunther's gonna wanna hug me. We can do the whole switch is a different species to us completely. You know, it doesn't have anything in common with us really. Um A masterpiece of deduction, you blithering jackass. I'll have you hide for this! But, sir, he could still, I mean, she could still be Dick Turpin, couldn't she? Yes. And where's your precious birthmark? And where's the thing it's supposed to be on? No one. Wolfpack, they will listen to. So I start to question my own place with my own dogs. And I can tell you, when people call us in, they've got a number of dogs, about one dog. We know exactly the one they've called us in about, but the problem's always another. What actually is a dog listener? Perhaps we could explain that. Yeah, well... After an emotional reunion, Jade turns her thoughts to tomorrow. Hi, Becky. Thanks for everything tonight. Um, what time I get here tomorrow? 11.15 um, in the morning, I've checked, and that's all fine. It's picking up at your house. Yeah. And your country's waiting there now, so whenever Thank you're you. ready. Oh, late night. Give me a call in the morning. I will do. The job's done for Rebecca, and she's happy with her evening's work. Well, I think Jade was, you know, quite happy with uh, my performance tonight. She just said, thanks for everything, and, you know, um, I just hope that I've, that I've been of, you know, some help. And she's felt that, you know, I, I was there, you know, to support her. Rebecca's on her way to see top designers Ellie and Charlotte, who've created her a business suit to make sure she looks glamorous in her new job. I think it's uh, really important to uh, look the part. Obviously, um, Jade wants someone who is um, going to, you know, represent her at all times. So, um, you know, this is, you know, the perfect suit for that, really. It's the moment of truth as Rebecca steps out in her very own PA outfit. Wow. Mm -hmm. Looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Looks beautiful. Are you pleased? Oh, yeah, it's amazing. 
But then again, the conditions have to be perfect and they can change at the drop of a hat. Tension levels rise, John, because you know... He's wrong. I mean, why would Stanley Matthews write on the card if they weren't his boots? He doesn't think the great man signed the card either. Hello, Braz. <laughs> Where the hell are you there yet? Okay, this way. Oh, that went better than I expected. Dr. Brazelton, I see you know Dr. Zimsky. Yeah. Careful, that's a police. And off cold, mister. Sorry. Hell, right, okay. Okay, what do you got in mind? Well, maybe I'm looking for some real action. So what about me? I got the big one. <laughs> I'll give it to you, baby. Let her go. You gonna jump me? Maybe we ought to pull a train on you. You look like you might even like it. Fuck you! Real tough chick. You see what you get, warriors? You see what you get when you mess with the orphans? I could ask a question. How come we're running? I told you, they were a bunch of wimps. Union Station, here we come. Hey, what about me? So what about you? It person. depends on what you're giving them money.
seven. Yes, the Peter's children in Dubai couldn't get the time off school. There's no holiday over there. In fact, of course, the kids in the UK they don't break up till next week anyway. They have had a free week, of course, Real Madrid. It's uh, very rare that they don't have uh, European or Copa del Rey games in midweek. There's Robinho to Emerson. QT, Emerson. Piles it to Michel Salgado. Della Pena brilliantly steals the ball and that was uh, a fair pass. It's just a fraction away from Luis Garcia. The performance may not have been all they planned for. Let's go to... On your mince pies. ...association of celebrity assistants and have invited Rebecca for a chat to offer her some advice and a few words of warning. It's a golden opportunity to find out more about her new profession. The world of Jade that she's working for will be different every day and she won't know what's going to happen. I think she's had a very good background. I think what she's learned and also what she might pick up tonight will put her in good stead for the job. I think Becky could be very surprised by what the job will entail, probably on a daily basis. Being new to the world of the celebrity PA, Rebecca is keen to gather valuable insight from these experienced professionals. The potential pitfalls of being a celebrity PA are that you can find the job really draining and that it does take up a lot of your, your energy, really, because so, you, you really do have to put your heart and soul into it. It is going to be like, you know, 24 hours, 7 days, and um, I just wonder when kind of a crossover between you know my life and and then and then working for Jade. You know how how do you, how do you sort that out? I think in the beginning you'll find it all encompassing. There'll be a lot to learn and a lot going on, but it is important to find that time to separate your life from Jade's life. It will evolve sort of naturally. Mm. I mean, once you have a working relationship with Jade and you both know where you're coming from yeah. and she'll understand but you've got to have time off and do mm. your thing as well. Is there anything that you can tell me that I need to do at the very beginning so that everything else will, you know, kind of fall into place? Is there anything that I need to just set up straight away? I would try to introduce yourself to all of Jade's contacts, her stylist, her hairdresser, her agent, and build up a database of the information that you'll need on a regular basis. Um, you know, there was a couple of comments that I am a bit of a party girl, and how do I establish, you know, the way a working relationship, and then, and then kind of, a, you know, a, you know, a friendship maybe. Um, you know, where you know where does that where does that cross over lie? I think you know you have to have a life, simple as that, and it's very important because if you don't have a life, then you're not going to be any good. You don't want to be swinging from the chandeliers and being that Miss Party Girl in her presence. Really, yeah. it is a working relationship. Yeah. She is your boss, and you do want to keep it professional. Yeah, definitely. During the discretion challenge, the PAs went out drinking on what they thought was a night off, but in reality, they were secretly being filmed. The next day, Rebecca was reprimanded for her lack of discretion. You were talking on the phone quite loudly about Jade. Now I'd had, you know, probably a little bit too much to drink, and I just thought, oh no, you know, I just didn't realise what I, you know, I couldn't remember what I, what I said, and so it was just, oh yeah, it was awful, but you know, a really good lesson. Is there anything that um, you've been asked to do, and you've just thought, oh, I'm not doing that? I, I won't do anything that's illegal. Yeah. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think Jade is probably a fine example of somebody who would understand if a request is unreasonable. Jade, uh, you know, is in the spotlight a lot of the time and, um, you know, her career has been based, um, you know, she's, she's very much in the media all the time and um, I just wondered if you've got any, any tips on how to handle that and, you know, when when's the right time to you know, become, you know, let her get on with it or, you know, the right time to step in. That is a, a, a thing you need to discuss with Jade in terms of how she wants to deal with that. But from your point of view, professionally, you know, you keep your head right down. You mm -hmm. don't talk to people about, you know, what Jade's up to or even, you know, who you work with sometimes. just want to say thank you so much for, you know, coming to meet me tonight. You've answered a lot of your questions and I feel, um, I feel a lot better about everything, actually. So, thank you so much. Pleasure. Yeah. Definitely. Good luck with everything. Do keep in touch. Thank you, I will do. Just come out of the meeting with David and Annabelle and it was really, really good. It was um, just a nice chat, really. This is a really exciting... Uh, uh, electronic speedometer. 
Why should it happen at this time of day? Did classes are being cut back or eliminated as schools focus? Seventeen-year-old Brenton Wilson can't believe his eyes. Look at it. I can see it. You don't exactly see one of those coming through your backyard every day, so I decided to pick up the camera and let everybody else see it. Yeah, it's coming right for us. It's a tornado, a big one, a mile wide, and less than a mile away. It's getting really close over here. And then it began to pick up strength and actually come closer towards me. Brenton should run for cover, but he stands his ground. I saw it coming towards me. I was hoping that it wouldn't wouldn't get me. The idea of death was actually in the back of my mind, but I was just so overcome with adrenaline, I didn't really care. The twister smashes through electricity pylons. Oh my God! Power line. Then takes down the town. That's gonna hit. That's gonna hit the school right on. Oh my gosh! That's about to hit the school. The tornado is getting closer and louder by the second. It sounded like a freight train. Oh my gosh! It just blew their house away. Get back in the house. The one thing that really frightened me, because I'm sitting here seeing this big, massive tornado pick up my neighbor's house that I've known all my life, and you know, it was very scary. As quickly as it hit, the tornado turns and dies away. This is all that's left of their home. Wipes out 98% of the town's buildings. I just wanted to go make sure everybody was okay. But incredibly, everyone is spared. My neighbors had just got out of the path of the tornado right before it hit. Brenton wanted to face a tornado up close. He got his wish and his shot. He hopes it's once in a lifetime. Oh my gosh, that's about to hit the school. Oh my gosh, power lines. Oh my gosh, they just blew their house away. Up next, a motorcycle daredevil performs two wheel tricks and gets brutally sideswiped. The world's most amazing videos too continues. Hoping we were all a little bit taller, a little bit prouder. We were all feeling the same fears and the same exhilaration. These three men brought us together. We knew together that there are no goals we cannot reach if we just reach for them together. There is no adequate way in which we can express our gratitude to the men themselves because they are no longer among us. However, we can serve their memory. What they stood for.
stupid. Everybody, you will not be let in if you're not in in the next two minutes. Here is. What's the, what's the, what's the matter? I don't even look at him now. This is really tough. We're sitting down. I want them to lay down of their own free will. Oh, he's done it. Uh, you see, what it's about is not telling the dog. Now you hear people say, go lay down. Well, that's taking away the free thinking. We're in a sitting room. We're relaxed, you know, comfortable. We want them to choose to lay down when they're ready. We talk about the four elements to this work. That's the food, the most important thing to the dog. Secondly, the hunt. That's how you get the food. Perceived danger, somebody coming to the door. And lastly, status, the separation. Whenever you separate with your dog, and see a separation is closing that door. That's what a separation is. You might only go into the bathroom, but it's a closure. And whenever you reunite, you have to treat that with the respect. It's a ritual they deserve. And this is a tough one for the humans. You come in there and you ignore the dog. Because if you greet him, you're saying your majesty. Before I enter this room, I have to pay you homage, pay you respect. So you walk in like a leader, yeah? So if we take charge of those four areas, you've actually got the dog. But this young chap has had the run of the house for a number of years now, so it won't be easy for him to give up the delights of the pantry, let alone the dishwasher. Callum, get out of the dishwasher. Get out. Bad dog. But Jan, you know... Put it mildly, has everybody given... Acting. I teach them command. Now oh, um, I'm going to go and buy a pair of shoes for Jade. I think she's going to a party of some sort. Getting to know Jade's taste is a key part of the job, and Rebecca knows how important it is to get it right first time. Well, Jade's not going to wear something like that. How bad are they? I mean, obviously, uh, I want to make sure I get, I get it right, because, uh, you know, when I'm thinking back to the Star Challenge, uh, I mean, I was on the winning team. I saw how she was with, you know, with the other team. She didn't like what they picked for her. So a little bit of pressure there. I cannot believe, you know, you're all half decent dressers. You've all got sense, but yet you turn me out like this. You look like yeah. a whore. I look like a dog. Can I have those? Both of those in a size six, please. Six, six. If I pick out something for Jade, and um, you know, obviously she's she's photographed in it and see it in a magazine, or she's wore it for an interview or something, I'm obviously going to feel. Um, you know, quite pleased with myself and quite excited about that because, you know, it obviously means that she's got faith in what I've chosen. With her fingers crossed that Jade will like what she's bought, Rebecca calls it a day. The next morning, she has a meeting with Jade's mum, Jackie, who has a very definite agenda in mind. My concerns are quite strongly about the Chavis, uh, Jade's boys. The boys are precious to me and she's got to, like, deal with them very... Careful because I'm their nanny. When Rebecca arrives, Jackie gets straight to the point. What are you like with children? I think I'm okay with children, but um, you know, with the, you know the type the challenge that I had with Bobby and Freddie, I literally had five minutes in the garden, and I think like I panicked because I was like, I didn't time. have anything, okay. and it was only five minutes. But then um, when I met them later on, I had more time with them, and you know, I was I was a bit more settled, and I was less nervous. What are you like for criticising? I mean, like if Jay just talks to you, it's like, well, how that? What are you doing? Yeah. How are you going to respond? I mean, I am quite a strong character, and I think that, um, you know, if Jade was to just, like, you know, you know, kick off or, you know, shout or whatever, I wouldn't, I would never get upset. It wouldn't upset but me. You won't go in I the just... corner and cry? No. Wicked, because no. you've got the sack, mate, in a second. You can't be weak around Jade. You no, really can't. No. I see your personality gleam at, oh, and I told Jade that I liked you. I thought oh, you was you. quite nice, but I didn't expect you to be picked. I said to Jade, why did you pick Rebecca? She went, why, why are you asking that, Mum? I said, well, because she seems too young yeah. to work for you. That's what I, I said to yeah. her, and she went, you know what, Mum? She said, she got Freddie's birthday just slung on her. And Jade said, you organised that professionally. You pulled it off, because otherwise Jade would have slaughtered you to me, but she didn't. She praised you. I'm very pleased to meet you, and I think you're going to pull through good. You know, even though you're going to work for her, become friends, because yeah. she's got a good sense of humour as well. Sure. I think her and Jade are going to get on very well, and I think the boys are going to love her too. They're going to laugh at her accent in any case. Very well done, Jade, for picking Rebecca. 
To be honest, I thought it went really well. Peter Evans, 28. And that's not very good. Well, his last two shots have baffled me a little bit. And Stephen will have a go at this red. And if he pots it and gets on a colour, I think we've got a new favourite for this frame. Now, if Peter can see the red, he'll take it on, and he can see the red, and he will take it on. So once again, Peter's mistake may not be costly. It wasn't costly in the previous frame. It's turning into a, a big frame now, this. It really is. I think whoever loses it will be disappointed. More so with the chances they've both had. Now, I don't know whether Stephen can get in enough behind this red to, to catch it full enough. I don't think he can. And if he's playing it red first, he's got to be careful. He'll be pushing it towards the left corner pocket. Needs a good cue ball here. He tried to get in behind it, and he didn't. Well, I don't think that's how he played it, but he'll settle for it. He will settle for that. He's got the snooker. <clears throat> Easy hit. But you never know getting out of a snooker where the balls are going to finish. John mentioned an easy hit and he's got the second part there because he's got it in a position where it's not straightforward to get the cue ball back into Bork. And it's very, very thin. As long as he avoids cannon on the yellow, he should get a good white. So red in behind the black, white in behind the brown is his first thought. Has he missed the kiss on the yellow? He has and he's played it excellent. Would you believe it? There's a gap. There's a gap between yellow and pink. You saw the grimace from Peter Ebden. Another chance for Stephen Hendry. Big, big frame this now, I believe, for Stephen. Yes, even though he's 20 behind, you would have to suggest it's red ball game. Whoever pots the red, you would think they would win the frame. All of a sudden, he's not queuing at all well in this match. And that's one of the reasons, John, I think his high break is only 59. Well, nowhere near. Amazing. off for Stephen. Another reprieve. Yes, and the fact that, as we see Peter missed that shot, the fact that Stephen can play this a bit firmer, I think he'll get very close to this one. There's not quite as much pressure on this kind of shot when you're stunning the mint. Yeah, but I still think you've got to put out of your mind the shot that's gone before. Long way away. Don't want to 
player misses the pot by that far, you just get the feeling he's just hitting across the ball at the moment. Well, in his career in a final, John, and he's been in many, many finals, as we know, I bet he's never missed two shots on the trot by that far. Yeah, you wouldn't be pressure with Stephen. It'd just be his technique at the moment. Had the yeah, I can feel lethargic. Benelin cold and flu. On the other hand, I don't seem to have any enemies at all. Well. Because if you want, I'm telling you. touch them. They open the ballast doors. You want to flood the ship? Sir, this is massive. Does anybody copy? Hello, somebody answer me. I don't like the way the Prime Minister Well this tenth frame still yet to be decided. A game a few chances, a few saves. We'll begin. And this could be it. So the help of the underworld to help find those responsible for the murders. They run you home. Let's do it. Train. It's saying Ben Wiedemann joins us now on the phone from Jerusalem with more on that agreement as well. Well, who actually? happy in the morning it's when I get to see my baby I'm happy in the morning and I'm happy when I come home huh? in between you don't want to run into me <laughs> I just always happy around my baby girl build-up um, and Graham Dot was fantastic as well and they're all of a sudden it, it was as if it was too much they'd run out of steam effort not because the players aren't playing great perhaps it is just you can't keep on going to the well and of course Peter Ebden had the day off yesterday so he's a little bit fresher having come through his semi-final against John Higgins on Friday well what can Mr Hendry do now He's two behind. <laughs> the, the gun was empty, right? I mean, you knew from, from the weight of the gun that the, the chamber was empty. Am I right? Well, there could have been one bullet. Oh, my God. Hey, Frank. Um, Frank, you think maybe we can go someplace and talk about this?
He's got better, I feel, from last season on set players. He scored a few goals this year. There's the strike. Keeper sees it, gets both hands across to it. Ramos. The alarm bells ringing. We're looking to finish it off here. Second goal would certainly do that. Certainly, Espanol have lost some of their poise. And here they go. It's Garcia. Oh, he overhits it. And the referee is suggesting that Canavara used his hand. Remember, he's just been booked. And that he sees that as intentional. Canavara's off. Well, he's come across and he's jumped with his legs, but his hands have come up automatically. And he's suggesting that it hit him on the head, not on the hand. The linesman is the one that's actually given the referee that information Rob I don't know if you can see on his eye Jerry there's almost a tear in his eye and a, and a red mark on his face where it hit him it hit him in the face no suggestion that his hand was anywhere near the ball well that's a wrong decision it's hit him in the face and I think uh, they should appeal that but why are players asking for him to be booked knowing that it's hit him in the face that's a bad decision from the linesman well, it was the referee's assistant on the far side that Score blind. Well, he's kind of already used his hand. Look at that mark. He looks like he's been hit by a heavyweight in the eye. Got the foot force in the face. He gets double the pain. His first red card in Spanish football is an unjust one. And there's no doubt that they're going to appeal that. And they should win the appeal. Well, Rob, the thing is, they've got another 25 minutes to go in this game, which is more important at the moment. And they're down to 10 men. Oh, last. It's a massive twist in the story, and immediately Capello makes a change. He's going to bring on the extra defender in here and sacrifice Robinho. Well, there's the map that has created the controversy, and uh, Espanol are going to. Only the United States can just anybody go to the house of the president to visit. So when I see this, these killing things, I call police. They say they call secret service. But two days you don't come. Well, the president gets approximately 1,400 threats a year, ma'am. We gotta check them all. Say this fellow's name is McCauley? Joseph McCrawley from Colorado, Denver. I still remember like yesterday. I cry and cry. Uh, Ruffetti only just made the game. He had a bit of a calf problem. He's taken off. The army has uh, been used mainly to sub this season in La Liga. It's his 13th substitute appearance. So he stops him being the top scorer for the team, though. He's uh, at least nine goals in all comps. Well, tugged up by Ramos, and there's some actors there as well. That's yeah, Luis Garcia. Uh, that really wasn't necessary, and that should be at least a yellow card, shouldn't it, Jerry? Well, the referee seems to just be given the free kick, but it was Luis Garcia. Driver's license. Thanks, Jack. See ya. Federal agents, open up.
God. That's you. Tremendous couple of weeks for Cannavaro, being crowned the best player in Europe and then getting the World Soccer Player of the Year. And tomorrow expected to become the FIFA World Player of the Year. Guti needs the charge. Andreas! Yeah, when'd I win? My God, it's really you? Who the hell is this? That was you in my apartment last night. McCrawley? Why not call me Booth? Why not Oswald? Because Booth had flair, panache. The lead to the stage after he shot Lincoln. Where are you? Closer than you might imagine. It's very exciting to talk to you. I feel like I know you. Oh, how's that? I've read about you, seen photos. You were JFK's favorite agent, the best and the brightest. But that was a long time ago. What's kept you in the game all these years? Why don't we get together and have a drink? We could talk about that. Oh, I'd love to. And I think the less you know about me, the better. Oh, why? Because I'm planning to kill the president. Oh, now you shouldn't have gone and said that. It's a federal offense to threaten the president. You could go to jail even if you don't mean it. I mean it all right. John F. Kennedy said all someone needs is a willingness to trade his life for the president's right. That's right. I'm willing. And going up against you, this raises the game to a much higher level. Fate has brought us together, Frank. I just can't get over the irony. What irony? You being intimately involved with the assassin. Moran! Moran? Oh my god, what was your little kid? <laughs> Here I Hey, hey Dino. The top to two points. So they have the full confidence, but they're back to ten. He's done a good job tonight for me, Emerson, as well. He's he's been the only real act. Oh, Roy against Roy Mackay. Well, they're in no great hurry to take the corner kicks and the free kicks. A goal up, the player down. To the far pleasure, it comes to Guti. Arke's head up. Bella Penny helps it on. Shot in the back of Raul Tenuto. Zavaleta. 
despite losing Cannavaro, Real Madrid again playing a high line. Guti. Little arm on the shoulder. Wow, well, now then. Is it the chance Stephen has been looking for? But the colours all over the place. about it and uh, it was a good shot actually to develop the blue there slightly because as you can see no high value colours available although I'm not sure if the black will pot to the right Six. corner but you can stay on the blue for some time but never really saw him. I mean, depending on who you talk to, he was between 5'8 and 6'2, between 165 and 180 pounds. Age? Between 28 and 45. <laughs> Must be for an election panic's what you get on a good day. I think... They've been waiting for you. Hey! Frank, Sam. It's been a long time since anyone's seen you in this part of the building. Yeah, well, I hear the new director isn't much fun. I've been the director for almost two years. Yeah. <laughs> Alejandro. Thank you. Frank, you know Matt Wilder? Yeah, Matt. Frank. He still owes me 20 bucks from Super Bowl 21. <laughs> he always liked Denver. <laughs> <laughs> this is agent in charge, Bill Watts. Bill? And Lily Rains. Hello. Lily? Secretaries get prettier and prettier around here. Mm. And the field agents get older and older. <laughs> <laughs> Lily's an agent, Frank. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to see if she had a sense of humor. Oh. <laughs> Have a seat. Well, let's talk about this guy. I guess we're calling him Boots for now, huh? Yeah. All right, what do you know about him? Well, he's dangerous. How do you know? I know things about people, Lily. Might I ask why you didn't take appropriate steps to know more that first night? Well, we had a busy day, Bill. Too busy to investigate properly? Your report says you were only in the room ten minutes. I didn't have a warrant. Given your reputation for undercover work, I wouldn't think that... What reputation are you talking about, Bill? All right, let's get back on track. Oh, I'd like to know what reputation he's referring to. Let's drop it. Am I being paranoid, or is he busting my balls? Oh, probably a little of both. <laughs> you know, Bill, there was a time around here when I was almost as arrogant as you. I don't have time for this. I gotta pull 75 agents out of Miami. Keep me posted, Sam, will you? So what do we do with this guy? Oh, well, we'll keep investigating. Uh, meanwhile, if you could have my phone tapped. What makes you think he'll call again? Oh, he'll call again. He's got uh, panache. Panache? Yeah, it means flamboyance. Mm, I know what it means. Really? I had to look it up. <laughs> All right, we'll tap your phone. And by the way, Frank, Watts is nowhere near as arrogant as you were when you had Kennedy's ear. Just what reputation? Of course. Forty points the lead. Well, thirty-nine. Sorry, but it still equates. That he needs one more red and a blue, and Stephen Hendry will need a snooker. He then goes the red. 
he's on the blue. <coughs> OK, the wrong angle, but he just makes certain of it. And Stephen, what can he do? There's one more frame before the mid-session interval. At the moment, Peter Ebden must think all oh, his birthdays have come at once. The opposition, the expected, has not arrived. <laughs> 